Hi, hope everybody's well. Um, we're getting on with our next um, double set of pages. So I've got my next set and I've been auditioning my fabrics. And what I'd like you to do um, for the base for this next one is just choose three fabrics and three threads. And initially, that's all we're going to work with. OK, so I've got a patterned fabric. So it's a I think it's a Sanderson um, fabric. Um, oh no, it's an Ingrid Finnan fabric. Just really, really nice, absolutely gorgeous. So I've picked out of that, um, I've got my grey for my base, which is my colour that's running out. So I've got some grey linen, and then I've got a little piece of yellow. Um, I think it's probably from some clothes or something, and it has got a cotton linen sort of feel. And then from that, I've chosen three pearly threads that sort of match so that's where we're going to start with this one three threads and three pieces of fabric one patterned two plain okay we're going to start with our patterned fabric first and we're going to use the pattern fabric to create the back of our pages now one of the things that i love um, with these is when you get the edges and i love it when they've got the color combinations so i'm going to use that as the edge of my piece because when actually I come to probably stitch this together um, I'll have that fluffy edge and I might decide that that's going to be the edge of my joining when it comes here and one of the things I can do is even cut an extra piece and pop it in the middle when I sandwich it together so what I'm going to do first is just cut out a section scissors there we go so I'm just going to lay my book over the top just make sure I'm not cutting through anything else underneath and then just cut myself out always good to cut it slightly bigger than you think you're going to need it because with it being the fabric book the pages do move and it just means then that you've got a little bit of leeway with what you're doing okay oops fiddly There we go. Okay, just move that over there. Right then. I'm actually going to open that out so I get a nice flat um, area to work on. Double check that I've got my joining page. And then, like we've done with all of them, just see now that's actually upside down with the flower on. Ooh, decisions. Do I have that at that side? Yeah, I think I need that at that side. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so like like I've always said, there's never always a plan of what we're doing. So come and pin on your background. Just so it's holding it in place and you can trim it at any point whenever you decide that that's where it needs to be. I'm going to pop a couple of pins it's going towards the spine. I think because I do like that at the other side, I think what I might do is on the fabric at the other end, there's another line of the dot, so I might cut myself out the other edge because I do like it. Pins. Right, so just do that one. That one and that. And I think what I will do is with my fabric, I think at the other side, 
the outside. Where are we? There we go. We've got the bit there. You don't have to um, edge it with anything like this. Um, you could edge it with anything. Um, you might have some rickrack, um, any lace, absolutely anything. But we're sort of creating two two borders either side. So, right. So with this, I need to work out and just trim. Just the edge of that. Trim that edge as well. Shoots at the edge, and then I'll stitch that down. Be one of the first things that gets stitched. So then I've got the starting point of my next two pages. Now with this one, I did mention last time it's going to come in two parts. So this is part one, which is going to be just creating the actual base of the pages, and then I'm going to set a challenge for part two. So one of the things that I liked with one of the first pages is when we did the pocket and tags. So I'd had it in my mind to do um, pockets again. So we're going to do two pockets this time. I'll sit, I'll trim those down later. Right, get my pages the right way around. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a pocket on each page and we're going to use our plain fabrics to create our pockets. Now your pockets could be any shape. Um, you could just keep them square. You could have them, um, they could be curved pocket quite like the idea of maybe doing a curved pocket so if you just find something that will just give you the curve at the bottom um just pop a shape on i need a pencil there we go obviously when you find a pencil it doesn't have a nib in it and then it always ends up that you can't find another one okay there we go so move that over there. So I've just drawn um, a semicircle just on there. Let's go have a ruler. There we go. Okay. And then I can just draw myself some straight lines. So I'm gonna make these just quite tall to start off with. It's nine centimeters wide. Okay. There we go. Let's move that out of the way. We're going to create two pockets and then for part two we're going to make um, two little concertina fabric books that are going to go inside them. Okay so I can start looking where I want my pocket. And then I think I might keep that length, but then turn that over and I might even pop some buttons down. The pockets I'm going to keep really, really simple. So I am just going to stitch down the edge. So I'm going to leave the raw edge. If you want to, well, I'm saying that. And then when I come to stitch it, I always end up changing my mind. But you could um, just turn the edges underneath as you're stitching around, which actually now I've said that, I'll probably end up doing that. Just turning the edges underneath and just... Um, 
um, tacking that down so that you've got your pocket but I do want to do a fold over at the top of my um, pocket so if I just straighten that off and then I might put some buttons or something on there if I do want to do that if you want to decorate my pocket I'll probably decorate it and stitch it before I actually put it on but I'm just going to pin these in place just so that you can see where we're sort of heading I get quite excited when we start doing a new page because it means that I've got something to sit and do on an evening even though I've got lots and lots of other things that I know I need to be doing it's always really really exciting when I can sit and stitch this I know like a few of you have got totally and utterly addicted to doing this so here's pocket number one so that will get stitched now like I've already said you could look at adding anything to this at all so it might be um, you get some lace or some buttons um it could be anything um so i've got little tags could have a little bit of tag and actually that's quite a nice idea well i love it when you when i'm doing this it's just like you're just thinking just off the top of your head and just coming up with ideas as to what you can do so if i just get a little bit of this fabric and it is just playing I don't really want you to think that you've got rights and wrongs to what we're doing. Just go with anything that you've got. If you're struggling for fabrics, um, I've been going through the bags that I'd got ready for the charity shops. Um, and I'd st I've started actually taking things to pieces. And um, I won't be sending them to the charity shop because I'm using the fabrics up. So I'm recycling them a different way. Um, so you could get a little thing like that and thread it through and then that could tuck into your pocket so that you're just starting to play around just with little bits and pieces. Um, it could be that you want to add um, some buttons or you could go back to all the so different sorts of things that we did when we were doing um, the Surf for the Soul. So I've got my um, giant eyelets. So you might want to stitch some of these on your pocket. Um, I've got buckles. Oh, oh, goodness me, there's, there's all sorts that you could do. And you can hand stitch, obviously, onto your pocket. And I would decorate your pocket before you stitch it on because it's going to get really, really difficult um, to try and stitch it once it's actually on there. So then I need a pocket at the other side. So I'm going to go with my grey my other pocket um trying to think I think we'll probably go a bit more rectangular with that one so just move that to one side got my gray fabric I do like the idea that people have talked about their auditioning and I love it on um, Instagram when people have got all their bits and pieces and they just take a photograph and just put on this is their audition their audition for their piece of fabric so I'm just play around with this just to work out a size I still quite like that flower so I don't really want to cover that up and I don't want to cover that up so probably need it maybe go a bit thinner with my pocket for this one so I've got my flower yep like that um, I might want to pick out a bit of the yellow to go on there So you can play around sort of adding little shapes so you have a little wrap round just around that side um i've got my edging so i could add 
lift up the edge, edge and wrap round, and maybe a yellow over the top, and then could play around with buttons coming down the side. There's all sorts that you can do. What else have I got in here? Same machine. There's all sorts. Could also go have little tins. Lots of tins with lots of things in. So it could play around with that. So the idea is to create two little pockets. And what we're then going to do is we're going to make little books that are going to go inside the pockets. But we are going to stitch on here as well. So using the threads that we've chosen. So I've gone for a grey, a bit of the yellow and a cream. What I'm going to do is I'll take the pockets off and all I'm going to do with these is running stitches just from top to bottom. Lots of lines of running stitch just up and down. Then when that's done, then I'll come back and I'll have worked on my pockets and then I'll talk about putting the pockets on. So that's where we are with our next pages. We're going for three pieces of fabric, three colours and two pockets. OK. So that's where we're at and I will be back once I have done a little bit of the stitching and give you a bit more of an update. OK, enjoy stitching. Right, I've stitched the background then with these next pages. So like I said, just doing a running stitch top to bottom and I'm tr I tried to keep all my stitches the same length left some gaps in between so I did them in groups of fours, sixes, um, single ones, all the way across and what that does it gives it this lovely texture sort of quilted because you've got the wadding behind it and just that regular rhythm of stitching for one it was very therapeutic doing it but it also creates this really really nice background now when you get to this stage we talked about pockets but I do not want you to stitch your pockets on because depending on how big the bits are that go in you may need to adjust your pockets um, or not stitch them down as tight so I have worked on my little pockets so with this one um, I've done lines going across um, horizontally in the other direction so I know that that pocket is going to go at that side then I've got my shaped pocket um, so we've got that on there just put a few little bits and pieces on just some little buttons embellishments a little flower with some bullion knots blanket stitch so still playing around all the different bits but what I don't want you to do is do not stitch them down that's really really important so this is part one is just to get your background stitched and your pockets okay part one done Okay, part two of filling. We're going to start looking at what's going to go in. And I mentioned about maybe a little book or something like that. Um, I've had a little bit of a different idea for this pocket. But for this one, we are going to do a little fabric book that's going to go inside it. So what I've done is I have got myself a piece of um, calico. It's the same width as my book, which is 20... It's about 30 centimetres long and 10 centimetres deep. And I folded it as a concertina. Now you can either iron that or I just tend to finger press them. But what it needs to do is that, if that pocket was going to be in there, we know that that's going to go around. And this is why I said not to stitch your pockets on. Because if we stitch it really flat and then we've got a little booklet to put in and you pull it up, it's going to distort your booklet. So what we'll do is when the book's done will pop the pocket around it and then work out where it needs stitching. It could even be that I might need to extend my pocket because I'm not quite sure how big that's going to go. And this is my blank book. So what I'd like you to do then with your book is you're going to work just on one side and treat each of the pages as a separate little bit of artwork. Okay. And I'd like your book to be based on your consistent color and white so mine's gray and white okay 
Now I have I've done because I'm I've been sat um, doing little bits on an evening. I've actually done my book, so I'll just talk you through um, each of the pages. Okay, so we've got pages one and two. So it's a little bit like a mini version of what we've been doing. So that's upside down. There we go. So page number one, which is this one here, is just going to be using um, three rectangles and then three tiny rectangles that's all you can use on that particular piece and really play around with the different tones of your colors I know a few people have asked how, how do I get depth into my work um, it is basically color tones so whatever your tone is so mine I've got like a really dark charcoal gray right through to white and just playing around again so we've got straight stitch on there some little French knots and some cross stitch okay page number two is going to be two squares and five buttons okay so we're a little bit like we did with our other book we're trying to keep a theme going so again still sticking with my colors play around with different textures so i've got like a printed cotton i've got a little bit of yorkshire tweed so the textures can be really really nice that's pages one and two okay pages three and four so page number three again we're going for two rectangles um and this time i'm going to work with a button now this one's a little bit different I bought some fabric I'd been down to the charity shop and I bought a shirt and this is actually the button section so the button is actually on the shirt so that's just the bit that I cut off which I quite liked and then just using a pistol stitch going out from the edge and then I've got lots of tiny little straight stitches there so we're just sort of playing around with mini pieces of work the next page we're going to do couching so this is when you lay something down and do a little stitch over the top so I've got this cord like a little grey cord that I've laid down try and turn that sideways so you can sort of see and then all you do is a tiny little stitch over the top at regular intervals all the way down I made a little tube of fabric and popped the cord through it and then just did a fly stitch down there so I've got a real contrast so I went with the grey and that one I've tucked over the top so a real contrast with the colours and then the last two pages this one we've made a little pocket and a teeny teeny tiny tag teeny teeny tiny tiny little tag so there we've got a little pocket and again what I've done is I've used the bit off the shirt that's got the actual button just stitched it around used a couple of other bits of fabric and then played around with um, just a little bit of lace did a little bit more couching sorry if you can hear that car in the background I'm actually sat outside today because it's quite nice um, and a little bit of lace so we've made a teeny tiny tag that's gone in that one and then this one is just a piece of lace so this is one that I've got that just has these gorgeous flowers on the tiny little French knots in and then contrast it again with another bit of fabric so we go from our little blank book to six mini pieces of work so this is why this is part two because this is quite a long um, double page I thought I'd give you something seen as though we're in the midst of the summer um, something to really get your teeth into now your little book can be any size because it depends on your pages so it could be a tiny little square one rectangular that's totally up to you but like I say I've just used calico it can be anything though it's not wadding with this one because if you did wadding it's going to make it a little bit too thick so we've got our little book concertina it back up again obviously this side and that side's not as exciting so what we can do is pop a little cover on it or a little wrap um, or just something to fasten it in we've now got alarms going off that's what always happens when you decide to go and stitch outside so I'm just going to use a little bit of machine thread okay. I'm not as prepared as I normally am I would normally have my needles already threaded there we go I did wonder about doing both sides of it because um, sometimes the back even though it's not the most exciting it can be quite nice because you've sort of got mark making on there um, but I've decided not to do that so all we're going to do just line up 
your pages so this is the spine and just taking this thread we're just going to push it through now we'll go somewhere I bought myself, I saw these um, on a workshop that I did, uh, a needle grabber so that when you're going through two or three different layers and it can be a bit hard to grab onto your needle, it's just like a little bit of rubber. It just makes it that little bit easier. So you pop it through, just grab hold of your needle and just pull it. So all I'm going to do is just go up the spine and just every so often is just pop in just a double stitch just through and then move up a little bit further and this is just going to hold it, hold that spine together for us. Now like I said when I was doing the original book and we set off doing that if you've got different book binding techniques please use them I'm not a book binder at all it's one of those things that I've had a go at and I do like doing it but we're not doing a book binding project so I'm just doing something that's just gonna hold it all together then we just need to think about the cover and what you'd like to do all that and I don't really want to do too much stitching on it I was just quite tempted just to do I don't know just like a wrapped piece of fabric maybe in a tie or something so just get to the other end pop a couple of stitches in and tie it off two just a couple of knots a loop one two there we go okay right so we've now got our little book with the little tag so I need to think about now what's going to go um, around the outside so it's sort of delving into your um, stash oops sorry just knocked it all there and just looking for what you've got so it's quite like that again I'm going through my bit bit bag my bit bag while I've been doing this project has been getting um, very full of stuff and I just think I need to start using some of the bits up so I'm just going to go with just looking for some greys at the moment seeing as though our book is on our base colour okay right I've got some greys some bits and pieces here Okay, so that's quite, oh, that's nice. I quite like that with the fringe in. Oh, it just wraps around. So that's ideal. So, just go and trim that edge. It's going to be then working out how to put it together because I quite like um the fringing there at the bottom I quite like the same at the top so what I'm going to do just to give me a starting point so I don't really want to have to stitch it all so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch down that side to start me off now I know normally I disappear off and do the stitching and then come back but I think oh, I'll do I'll sit and stitch now. I'm just going to use my machine cotton again. 
just attack it. Just do a big tacking stitch. So just to hold this in place and then I can make decisions about what I'm going to do next. So this is just thinking about the little cover. For our little book, obviously we've still got our big cover to do. I know a couple of people have asked me if they've missed the videos. You haven't missed the videos. Um, I'm videoing this as I'm going along. So I don't have the finished thing yet. So we're all doing it together. Okay, so I've tacked that in. So I know that's there. Which then means I can just trim that off. I trim it a little bit bigger than I need and then I trim just across the top there we go so I can fray that just even that out on the wall there we go I'm sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. Just trimming that down. So I quite like um, the frayed bit there at the bottom. So then what I can do is match that up. Just fray that top bit. So then when it closes, we've got a really nice frayed little bit there. Okay. So then I just need to decide what I'm going to do with this. I've got it tacked on. So if I just have a look at some of my other other bits of fabric that I've got. Don't think I want anything on the back. Um not quite sure what to do. I quite like that the inside page so it'll get trimmed off and stitched oh I've got a bit of lace there that I'll put in which is quite nice probably could have done with ironing that don't like ironing Quite like that. Looking around for other bits and pieces have I got. Got that bit. The lace and that. The computer just went dark then. Uh, oh, this is always really hard. Let's have a look. Got some other bits and pieces. If you're not sure what to oh, oh, now you see. I could maybe have that. Have that up to it and turn that under. Well, that's nice. Oh yeah, quite like that. Turn that under there. Don't really want to put loads of lace on. I've got a bit of rick rack. Some rick rack down the edge, maybe. Or do I just leave it plain? And I think I might just leave it plain and I might just pop some buttons on it and just have the lace. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it really, really simple. So I'm going to trap a piece of lace down the side. Now it's whether I use that one, because that is a pretty lace. I don't really want to hide that. Or do I pop that? Oh, they look like fingers. Like fingers and oh, that's pretty. That's nice. Maybe I trim that down. What else have I got? Oh, I've got that as well. I quite like that. That little circles. Oh, that's nice. Oh, right. So, okay. Oh, decisions, decisions. 
I definitely know I'm going to turn that under to give me a nice neat edge and then I think I might just run that down the edge and then maybe just have some buttons I think that's what I'm going to do so rather than sitting and watching me stitch that I'll get that done and then I shall be back Okay, so what I've done is I've done a little blanket stitch just along the end of there that's just going to keep that down. And before I fasten that down, I've just done a couple of lines of running stitch, put my lace down and three buttons. So then what I can do is wrap it round to the other side. And then what I'm going to do are some little stab stitches on this side. So again, using my cotton. start that off just so my knot ends up on the inside pop this round right I'm just going to pop a couple of pins just to keep it in place and then it's basically some tiny so I don't really want to see the stitch just some little stab stitches and then what I'm going to do is just slide my needle along a little bit so I'm not coming through onto the other side so I'm sticking it between my pieces of fabric and then I can do another tiny stab stitch I'm just going to go along only about a half a centimetre come back up And then a stab stitch. If you want to do a decorative stitch, do a decorative stitch. I just thought with this one. So what I'm doing there is I'm going, I don't know if you can see that. I'm sort of got my needle between the two bits of fabric so that I can move it along a little bit. And then do another little stab stitch. The other way that you can do it is angle your needle so that your needle comes up a little bit further along and then if you're going to do that you're probably going to do a few you won't probably go as far so angled my needle so my needle's going along the piece and then I can do a little stab stitch. So the idea with the stab stitch, so I've done this in a white cotton, but if you look on this side you can't see, you can see them if you really, really, really look. Um, but they are pretty well hidden. So I'm doing it probably every half centimeter or so. It's just going to attach the cover of our book. This is the way that I'm doing it. And if you remember what I've said in previous videos, this is just the start. It's just the starting point. And you can interpret this however you want. You might decide you're a bit fed up with fabric. I know there's quite a few people that um, do scrapbooking that have had a go at this. You might want to do a miniature paper book. That's perfectly fine. Like I say, this is just 
your inspiration. So we're ending up with a little mini fabric book or paper book within a book, which I thought would be quite cute. And within the book, there is a little pocket and a tag. So we've sort of mirrored some of the techniques. I did even on an arm about trying to do absolutely miniature suffolk puffs, but I just decided that I wasn't even going to try it. And I thought as well, if I did that, it might have made it just a little bit too thick. So what we should have now, there we go, is our little miniature, oh, take the pins out, our little miniature fabric book. I'll take out my little tacking stitches. Now, if you want to do something on the back, that's fine. Um, not sure. I might end up popping a little label on or something like that. But because it's a few layers thick and you've not attached that to the inside, if you did want to stitch on it, it's fairly easy to do that without actually going all the way through to the other side. So obviously you can open it out as well if you wanted to. And I think that's one of the beauty of this is you can go back if you want to to some of the pages so if you wanted to work on it a little bit more you can open it up and obviously you can get your hand in between now so you could carry on stitching you never know I might even carry on stitching with that so we've got that we come back to our fabric book so if our pocket's going to go there this is what I meant about not um, stitching this down straight away because it just depends on how big your pocket it, your book is sorry as to how you're going to stitch your um, pocket on and where it needs to go now I'm hoping that actually that might just be quite nice I'm going to have it so it's quite snug I think maybe so I can get it in and out I don't know part of me is wondering whether or not I need to add maybe a bit of something oops maybe just to extend it a little bit possibly anyway um, so what we'll end up doing is we'll end up stitching that down because sense my brain's busy pondering I just quite like that just wondering if I stitch it will it hold well, I might have to stitch something through it. Right, if I pin, pin that side down. Right, how many pages am I going through there? Let's pin that down. So these are bits that you just have to work out as you're going through because obviously, oh, I should put it lower down. Oh, is it? No, because so that comes up. Um, Obviously, everybody's books are totally and utterly unique to you. So then that would go right there. This is what I mean about having um, not stitched this down first, because I'm going to have to leave that quite puffed up to be able then to get my little book in. If you go flat and then you put your book in, what will happen is it end, it'll end up distorting your page. We don't really want that. It's going to chunk your book out even more. It's getting, mine's getting a little bit like a pillow now. Okay, let's pop those pins in. There we go. Right, so we've got pins. Oh, easy which means then I can slide my book in. There we go. Yeah, so I know I can stitch that down and then I just need to work out then coming around the bottom. So if I pop in a pin at the bottom there, then I can work the rest. So I'm just pinching the bottom just so that I know where that bottom bit of that needs to go. Take that out and then I can just jiggle and then when I come to stitch it I can work out 
where then that needs to go. Yeah, there we go. Let's pop a few more pins in. There, so there's my pocket. Stand that up. I've got my pocket. That's my little book. It's going to reside in. So when we start putting this shut now, <laughs> it's getting very chunky. Okay, which is why I decided not to do a book at this side. Because I just thought I was just getting ridiculous. So one of the things that I just thought about is I've loved doing this. Absolutely loved it. So I decided um, every book, it needs a heart. So we need to create a heart um, to go in our book. And there's loads of different ways that you could do this. If you go on Pinterest and just put in um, fabric hearts or collaged hearts or anything, um, there's so many different ones. There's all different sorts of things you could do. So all I did to start off with was I made myself a paper template so that I know that that's going to fit. You could keep it really, really simple. And I've got um, a little bit of a vintage quilt here, which I think is really, really pretty. And I could just cut out um, a heart shape from the quilt and just have a little quilted piece. Or you could even quilt your own um, little bit of fabric. So it's two bits of fabric with some wadding in between. And then it's a little bit like the stitching that we've done in the background that gives you that beautiful texture. Um, but I've got a few bits of like vintage quilt. So you could, um, like I've got some really lovely lines on there. There's that row. So you could cut that out. I quite like that bit though as well. Oh, then it's decisions, decisions, but I quite like that line. Oh, that looks nice there. We've got a bit of pink there and there. Okay. So if I just pin that on. Pin. Oops. Pin. Okay. Now, when you've done this, obviously, you could decorate it. You could just leave it as it is if you wanted. You could just put another heart on there. There's all sorts. This one is just really just going to be left up to your imagination and how much time you want to spend on it. But I just thought, I've loved doing this. Hopefully, you've loved doing it as well. And I just thought, oh hearts are just so cute and I have gone slightly off kilter with my colour but um, I just had that bit of um, quilting that I just thought was gorgeous so it could be that you just pop your little heart in there you might pop a little ribbon on it um, if I was going to do that I'd probably blanket stitch around the edge and pop a little ribbon or oh, I've got a little bit of um, got a little bit of rick rack which is quite cute so what you could actually i would blanket stitch around i would pop my rick rack on and then where i've got that i would just stitch through um a button and i just keep it really 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 simple so that's one way that you could make a heart um, another way is you could actually build it up. So you could use your template and cut it out of fabric. So I'd got a piece of fabric here that's similar colours to the colours that I've used. Cut out a couple of heart shapes. So I've got one. And then you can start collaging um, on the top. So I've just moved that out of the way because there's a lot of colours on there. There we go. So I've got my original heart shape and then I've popped some different colours, different little bits of fabric, the bit of lace that I've got which is this one, um, I chopped that down the middle and just extended it top and bottom, added some buttons and then just on a little piece of fabric I've just done the word love, let me just move this out of the way, I'm just busy stitching that on at the moment. Just patching that on. Oops. 
so I've got the word love so I just um, drew that on in pencil but you could use fabric markers and um, friction pens or anything like that um, a tip that I learnt um, on a workshop the other day um, was that when you're stitching words rather than going as you would writing go backwards because then you just think about stitching the lines rather than stitching the word so then all I'm doing now is just patching that on so I've done this and I've, I've got my little quilty heart and I quite like that as well Ooh. choices choices might have to see which one I prefer or I might just have to put um, both of them in the book I can have two hearts so I'm just using little straight stitches obviously this can be as elaborate as you want one of the things I realized the other day when I was doing this is after no bead work at all in this I know quite a few people have they've added beads and all sorts but I don't know why still got two pages the last two pages and the cover to do so you never know might end up going bead tastic on that and then what I was gonna do is somewhere I have got a bit of wadding you never find the bits that you want when you want them so excuse me a second but I'll have a bit of rummage always the way when you want to find something oh there we go oh it's only a little bit that'll do that'll be all right so a little bit of wadding so i've got a bit of wadding just trim that i don't need it for the whole shape because i'm going to stitch um around the edge and I just want that just to pump the middle bit out really okay there we go so I've just cut that so it's just a little bit smaller still got my white um, thread okay And I'm just going to pin this to hold it in place. Oops. There we go. Let's keep that there because I'm going to use that same thread just to do a straight stitch. And again, you could do anything you want. Blanket stitch, chain stitch. Could do um, a, like a um, binding stitch which just wraps it round, really fills it in. I know we've not done any machine stitching at all during this project, but if you just want to whiz it round the machine, feel free to whiz it around the machine. So I'm just pinning it to hold it in place. It's such a nice afternoon. Actually, that's an aeroplane. That's something that I've not heard in a while. Sometimes we get them going over if they're going to either Leeds, Bradford or Manchester, but that's an unusual sound. Okay, so where do we finish? Finish there. Just going to bring that up. And then I'm just going to go and do a little running stitch all the way around the edge just to bind it together I quite like the idea of my quilted heart as well so I might end up coming back with a couple so I'm going to carry on stitching that once I've done that then I'll then bring it back I'll have a look at where that's going to go inside my pocket get those stitched on and then I'll be back with the final little bit of the book well not the bit of the book but the bit of these pages
Right, so there we are. We've got bucket stitched on. So here, the one with my little book, I have just done a little straight stitch. Just sort of like a patch stitch, tiny, tiny one all the way around. Some pockets lifted up, which then means my little book just pops in there. Then the other one with the heart in it, um, I've done a blanket stitch down the sides and then just a little straight stitch because I quite like that feathered edge and I didn't really want to get rid of that with the blanket stitch. So there's a little straight stitch across there. And then there's my little um, heart. Oops, still got a pin in there that pops in the pocket. And I couldn't really resist um, still doing my little quilted one on the little piece of vintage um, quilt with this one because obviously you can't work on two separate bits it's one piece with the stitching on the top so where the little tag is I've got the button going through with a button on the back and then the stitching here all you have to make sure is just that you're catching the top layer of fabric so it doesn't go through onto the back so I've got a choice really of whichever heart I want to have in my pocket so to speak but there's loads of different things that you um, can do these are just two different examples for the hearts that can go into your pocket so exciting stuff that's your two-parter so part one was getting the background done and sorting out your pockets Part two is getting your little fabric book and your heart going on. I love that one, but I also like that one as well. So I'm not quite sure which one I prefer. So they can both go in the pocket. And then we are on to our last double page. So I've got to get my thinking cap on about what we're going to do. And then we've got the epic um, cover. To do after that so you can really see now this is getting really really chunky i'll do a couple more um joinings of pages as well different examples so there's one video that shows you the first two and then the next ones i added on to i think it was the last yet yeah, it'll be in the video for this one will be the joinings so that's where we're up to those two pages so I can't wait to see what you do. Please remember to send me um, photos of what you've done. Keep going on Instagram and tag in hashtag so for the soul book. If you follow the hashtag as well, you'll see what other people are doing. And I will see you when we get onto our last two pages. See you soon.